Okay, all right, guys. Um, day one's in the books. Um, you know, I told the guys at the very end, um, you know, I, I liked their attitude. Uh, really, I liked their effort. I did tell them we got a long way to go, but that's the fun part. You know, the key's going to be how, where we're at 15 days. And really, the guys are just learning the standard, learning how to practice expectations. Uh, we were flying around, playing very, very fast, um, but I really was, was pretty pleased overall. Uh, as far as the group's, uh, you know, attitude, effort for the first day. Questions? Coach, uh, Brandon Helwig, Rivals.com. Working with the quarterbacks on the field for the first time, what was that like? And specifically, I said, what was your impressions of working with Dylan Gabriel? Yeah, well, first of all, the quarterbacks, I mean, we're, we're just kind of starting from the basics, um, you know, and all the guys got a chance in all the drills. Obviously, Dylan, you can tell he's a guy that's played a lot of football. And, uh, you know, we, we went extremely fast. Uh, there was a lot of different receivers that rotated in. Uh, that was by design. Um, you know, we'll start getting all the timing down and all the, the little things once we get the big picture. But, you know, overall, the quarterbacks, I thought they were desperate to learn. And, uh, you know, I thought Dylan led the bunch today. Gus, Matt, Rochelle from the Orlando Sentinel. Um, you know, obviously you're a veteran coach. You've been through spring practices before. But did this one feel a little different? Do you see, do you see a little bit of nerves because you're you're coming back after everything's gone on? You, you know, really, it feels really natural. And, uh, you know, it feels like it did the very first practice I had at Arkansas State in 2012. And then it really feels like the very first practice I had in 2013 at Auburn. It felt the same. You know, and here's the deal. I mean, everybody's equal. I mean, we're, we're letting it, all of them play each practice. They earn what they get. Uh, and we're just trying to set the standard because there's probably some new things that, uh, you know, or we do things different probably than the last group did. So just trying to set the, the standard, count on me. You know, we need to make sure we can count on each other. And they're getting used to their coaches too, but it was real exciting. Uh, I love the spirit of this group. I'll tell you that. That's what I told them after. I mean, we, we've got some potential and Looking forward to working with this group. Hey, Coach Christian Brewery, WFTV. What are the things you want to see on day one of a spring practice? Yeah, I told him it's just attitude and effort. And I'll talk about that winning attitude, you know, how you respond. Uh, you know, there's going to be some ugly things. There was today. Well, I don't expect the timing to be perfect. I don't expect that, uh, you know, the steps to be perfect, but the attitude can that coach me coach attitude, how they respond to adversity. We strained them. We wanted to see how they're going to respond once they got tired, once they got hot. And I think for the most part, you know, the guys that didn't, they kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. So it was really good to kind of see where we're at. But I do think we got a whole bunch of guys that want to be coached, that want to be good. Uh, and that was the encouraging thing for me. Gus Adams, shout out from Fox 35. Um, I noticed a couple of things. One, no music for you. And two, you have the mic set up to the to the loudspeakers. Are those two standard things for Gus Malzahn practices? Well, I, I tell you what, you know, we will have music as it goes. But I just thought, especially the first week, we got to teach. And I want to make sure they're locked in on the teach. They can hear the coaches. We slowed down a lot between drills. We either went really slow or really fast. Uh, but we will. We'll, 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 we'll turn the music on, you know, as the spring practice goes and as far as that goes. And I've always had the, you know, the little mic there just to make sure we can communicate and, you know, everybody can hear, especially a defensive field being, you know, on the other side, pretty, 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 uh, you know, big surface away from the offense. This being your first spring practice, uh, how familiar are you with the roster and how do you feel it's shaping up uh, right now? It, you know, I, I'm somewhat familiar. Uh, I tried not to do a whole lot of prejudging, watching film from last year. I did watch some, you know, just to make sure put guys in positions best we can. But trying to have everything, you know, open and equal. Let everybody earn everything. It's kind of a new day here, and so that really has been my approach. Gus, what, what's your biggest concern as you guys go through the next 14 practices uh, of spring? What do you want to see from these guys by the time it's all done? Yeah, you know, we're going to be fairly simple. Uh, we're just going to build the foundation. You know, for us as coaches, it's two things. We're building the foundation of what we are offensively, defensively, and special teams. And we're evaluating, uh, you know, where we're going to put the pieces of the puzzle, try to figure out what our strengths are, uh, try to figure out what our weaknesses are and, and build around our strengths. And really more than anything, I know offensively is putting the putting the guys in the right position for what we want to see in the fall. So it's a combination of, of those two things.
Coach Brandon Helwig again from Rivals.com. There's going to be a vote, I believe, on Wednesday about you know recruiting in the dead period and potentially lifting that on June 1st. Obviously, it's been a long time coming. The last 13 months have pretty much been no contact. Do you think, you know, college football is obviously ready by the time we get to June that you guys can safely, you know, host recruits and camps and, and that, that sort of thing? You, you know, I really think we can uh, with the information we have, um, you know, to do that. And so, you know, I think uh, most coaches around the country, most programs really hope it does open up June 1st. I know most recruits and I really feel like we can handle the COVID etiquette situation and be safe with that. You know, the camps uh, are something that we feel real strong about, too, that we feel like we could do a good job with that. Coach Trace Falco, Sons of UCF, from a conditioning standpoint, what did you see today? And could you talk a little bit more about how Chris Dawson came onto your radar and what you hope he brings to the program? Yeah, you know, our guys, Chris has been here for uh, three and a half weeks, something like that. Our, our guys, and you know, they, they didn't really have a full-time strength coach, I think, for almost a month. So they weren't in great shape, and, and that, that's okay. I mean, what I asked these guys to do, and Chris did a good job of laying a foundation. Uh, we're not in great shape right now, but – what it allows us to do is, can we push through? And that's what I told our guys, you know, just make sure you push through mentally and physical toughness. And I think for the most part, our guys did that today. As far as Chris is concerned, he's a guy that, not just me, but every head coach in America knows who he is. And, you know, for us to get him here, he's one of the top in the country. There's been huge schools try to get him the last three or four years, and he chose to stay. But he felt like this place and this opportunity you know, had great potential. And he, he that's the reason, main reason he came. We're real, very blessed to have him. I would say that our players have, uh, have really enjoyed working with him. And, you know, the key to working hard, you got to enjoy it. You know, as a player, you got to want to come work out and be pushed and, and developed and all that. And he's laid the groundwork so far for that. And, and I think if you ask our players, they would, uh, they would second that. Gus, Jason Beattie with 24-7 Sports. We talked about the players getting out there on the practice fields, and we, we got to see a little bit of that this morning. From a coaching perspective, you worked with some of these guys before, but not everyone has worked with each other. How did you feel like that went out, and how do you feel like the coaches are responding to this first practice? Yeah, I, I was very pleased with our coaches' energy, positive energy, and just flying around, you know, coaching. And, you know, players will feed off their coach. And uh, there was some great positive energy from our coaching staff. They're so excited to – to work with our guys. They're so excited to be, be here. Uh, you know, so it's a really good group. Uh, you know, I, I'm, we're very fortunate to have this staff. Gus Adam shout out from Fox 35 again. Um, how much uh, of, of your kind of playbook and system do you try to install here? And do you have to kind of stop yourself from trying to overload everybody at once? Yeah, that's a great point. You know, what we've done is uh, we're going to go very slow. We're going to lay the foundation we're going to get good at things before we leave the spring. And that's really our goal. So we're going to go extremely slow. I think we've got six days of uh, install and we're going to come back and reinstall the six days. So, you know, we're not going any more than that. And, uh, and then it kind of fits in with evaluating our players. I mean, you know, that, that's going to be real critical to developing, you know, our plan offensively and defensively and special teams until we, you know, get a couple of recruiting cycles and you recruit specific to certain, you know, certain positions. Gus, John Alba again from Spectre Sports. Sorry about that. The computer went unmute me. Um, what kind of open-mindedness to all of that have you seen from the players? Have they been receptive to uh, the new stuff you're trying to implement in here? You know, I think so. I, I will tell you this. I, mean, I love our players. I mean, I, just getting to know them for a month. Uh, they're bright-eyed. Uh, you can tell they're 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 excited. Now they're probably a little anxious too with the newness and. and how we're going to operate, but man, the players have made a great impression on me so far. Gus, you know, D Dylan Gabriel's kind of obviously a little bit of the veteran on the quarterback room. What are you kind of hoping to see out of him kind of maybe to take some, maybe some bigger ownership, some bigger leadership through the spring practice? You talking about the other guys or are you talking about Dylan? Dylan, Dylan, what, what you want to see from him oh, maybe yeah, as it takes yeah. on a larger. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, he's he's learning the new things too. Um, you know, so uh, you know, he he'll, he'll lead the group. And uh today I think he had a, a really good start, you know, as far as just uh the leadership and all that. And 
like I said, I think we're in a good spot. And, you know, to have a chance to win a championship, you have to have a big time quarterback, uh, what he's done before. And uh, I think he's in a really good spot. And, uh, and I think he's got a good understanding of the big picture of what we want to accomplish this spring, too. Gus, uh, Chris Vanini from The Athletic. Uh, the AFCA and the NCAA have started a push to try to prevent players from faking injuries to slow down a tempo. Uh, as someone who has run a lot of tempo in the past, is that something you've had to deal with from an opponent? And, and what do you think about the idea of trying to come up with a penalty? Yeah, you know, of course, I'm all for coming up with a penalty that, you know, the, the key is from official standpoint, the objectivity instead of subjectivity. Uh, you know, but yeah, I, I would, I'll be all for that. But I know when you talk to officials, it puts them in a very, you know, tough spot, you know, as far as, uh, you know, how to, how to officiate it. All right. Thanks guys. That's it for coach. Okay. Thank you guys.